Hey, Problem Solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I was going to go over a trade math exam. There's 60 problems on it, no calculator. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description. And what I'd recommend you do is you go to that link, you print it out, and you do a few of the problems first and then watch how I do them. Anybody could do this, it just takes a little bit of practice to so watch the videos, um, learn the skills, do the problems you already know, and then watch how I do them and hopefully it'll refresh some of the ideas for you. I'll go over a few tips and tricks as well on how to do well in a standardized math exam. Um, this is a trades math assessment test. The actual one only has 30 problems. Some are multiple choice, but the most of them you fill in. I probably won't do all 60 problems in this video. I'll just get started on them. Uh, maybe make it like a 15 minute video or so, and then I'll break it up into a few more videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Again, no calculator, so you're looking for a couple tricks involved. A couple other things you want to do is mark up the test as much as you can so you don't make any careless mistakes. And in case you go back to the problem, all your work is already there. Um, read pretty thoroughly, circling key words. Okay, number one, give the place value of the digit one in this number right here. So this is 917,482 ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. So the one is in the ten thousandths place. Round the number to the thousandths place. So that's gonna be this five right here. This is above 500. So you're gonna round this to 86,000. I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera over my shoulder now and then show you how I do these on paper. Okay, so there's the first one, ten thousandths, round it to 86. Number three, convert to standard form, one million nine hundred. 80,270. So that looks like that. Next one, add these. Best way to add the numbers is I take the larger one and put it on top. 10,355 plus 5760. I go from right to left. Actually, we all go from right to left. And then I'm going to carry. So 5 plus 0 is 5. 5 and 6, 11. Carry the 1, 7 and 3 is 10, plus 1, 11. Carry the 1, 6, and then bring that one down, and you have 16,115. There it is, answer D. Number 5, 9036 minus 4877. Again, I would do this first, and then watch how I do it. 6 minus 7, I can't do that, so i got to borrow. I'm going to borrow. 10 from this, which is going to turn into a 2 and make this a 16. I add that 10 here. 16 minus 7 is 9. 2 minus 7, I can't do that. So i got to borrow a 10 from here. But there's no 10 here, so I actually have to borrow 10 from here to make this a 10. And then from this 10, I'm going to borrow 10 to make that a 12, and now this becomes a 9. So then I have 12 minus 7 is 5, 9 minus 8 is 1, 8 minus 4 is 4, and I have 4159. There it is right there, answer C. 231 times 146, maybe I'll do that over here, a little bit more room. 231 times 146. I'm going to multiply this 6 through the whole thing first. So 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 3, 18. Carry the 1, and then 6 times 2, 12, plus that 1, 13. And I'll put an X in here for place holder. And then I'm going to go 4 times 1. 4 times 3 is 12. Carry the 1. 8 plus that 1 is 9. And then lastly, I'm going to multiply that 1, but after I put in those two placeholders. And then I have 1 times 1. 1 times 3. 1 times 2, and to add all that up, 6, 8 and 4 is 12, carry the 1, 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1, 7, 10 and 3, 13, and I have 33, 726, answer D. Okay, number 7, 20, 20 divided by 3. Again, do these problems first, have paper in front of you. Um, before you watch me do them. 
And then I'm actually, even before I do this, I'm going to glance down and I see I have remainders here. So that means a remainder of one, two. So let's do this. Three goes into 20, goes in there 16 times. I'm sorry. It goes in there six times to give me 18. 20 minus 18 is two. Bring down this two. Three into 22, seven times. Give you 21. Two minus one is one. Bring down the zero. It's going to go into there three times. Let me look up here, 673. And then 10 minus 9 is 1, so I have 1 left over. So it's going to be 673 with a remainder of 1. Okay, number 8. Math department has $300 to spend on a set of calculators. Write that down. The calculators cost $32 each. How many calculators can the department purchase? and how much money will be left. So it's really going to be 300 divided by 32, and then again, it's going to have a remainder. So I have 300 divided by 32. It does not go into 30 at all, but it goes into 300 nine times. Let me double check that. 32 times 9 is 18, 27, 28. So it goes in nine times, 288. Then I'm going to, 300 minus 88 is 12. So it goes in there nine times with $12 left over. Answer D. Number nine, a farmer wishes to place 3,572 eggs in a container holding 12 eggs. How many containers will be filled completely and how many will be left over? So again, it's going to be a division problem. It's going to be the total number. How many times does 12 go into that? And then what will the remainder be? So 12 goes into 35 two times, 24. 5 minus 4, 1, 1. Bring down the 7. 12 goes into there nine times, and that's uh, 108. i got to borrow again from here. I'm going to make that a 0, but make this a 17. 17 minus 8 is 9. 0 minus 0. Bring down the 2. It's going to go in there 6 times, I think. 12 times 6. 72. Nope. 8. 7 times. So 12 times 7 is going to be 14. Carry the 1. 7. 84. So it'll go in there 7 times. 84. Again, i got to borrow here. Borrow. Make this an 8. Make that a 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. So I'm going to be able to get 297 with a remainder of 8, or 8 eggs left over right here, answer C. Estimate the product by rounding each number to the nearest 10 thousandths. So 10 thousandths, this is the hundred, the thousandths, 10 thousandths. So I'm going to round that to 70,000. I'm going to round that up to 40,000, and then I'm going to multiply those two together to get 28. So 7 times 4 is a 28. Then I've got to add all these zeros on there. So I've got 4 and 4 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to count over 3, and I'm going to have 2.8 billion. So 2.8 billion right there. So that's my answer there. Then down here, number 11, simplify. Well, I look at this, and this problem, I think about what the problem's about. It's about order of operations. Order of operations, you can remember with this mnemonic device, PEMDAS, parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication, then division, then addition, then subtraction. So first thing is my parentheses, so I have 70 minus 30 divided by 5, 6, plus 8. And then I can go left to right. 70 minus 6, 64. 64 plus 8 is 72. And there's my answer C right there. Take a look at number 12 here. Write a fraction that represents a shaded area. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I know the bottom has to be 5. The shaded area is 2 of those 5. So the total is 5, 2 of them are shaded, so it's 2 fifth. answer B. 
rewrite the fraction with the indicated denominator. How do you get from 5 to 30? You have to multiply by 6. So 3 times the same 6 will give you 18. So it'll be 18 over 30, or answer A. Number 14 here, simplify the fraction to lowest terms. Write the answer below. Um, so you're kind of looking for numbers that'll go into both of them. 99 is divisible by 11, by 9. Um, but 11 is going to go into both of them. 11 will go into 99. Uh, 9 times, 11 will go in here 10 times, so 14 is going to be 9 tenths, answer B right there. Okay, number 15, um, kind of cut off, but hopefully you printed this out and you're doing it yourself first. So I got two people, Alan and Rajiv, worked on their homework. Alan finished 18 of the 30 problems, and Rajiv finished 28 of the 35 problems. What fractional part of his total number of homework problems did each boy finish? Which, who finished a greater number? So we got to get a, let's reduce these down first. Um, three will go into 18 six times and into here 10 times. But I could see they're still even, so I could reduce them again. Two will go into here um, three times and two into there five times. So Alan did three-fifths, so seven, seven will go into 28 four times, seven will go into here five times. So those are the reduced fractions of completion. And then, then the next part, who finished a greater fractional part? Um, well, this is, you know, if I had this thing split in the fifths, one, two, three, four, five, he would have finished three of them. And this guy right here would have finished four of them. So Rajiv would have finished a greater number. So that's a larger fraction. Number 16, multiply and write. The answer is fraction. This is really a fraction as well. It's just 10 over 1. I multiply across the top to get 20, across the bottom to get 20 ninths. Multiply and write the answer as a mixed number or a whole number. So first thing I'm going to do on number 17 here is um, turn them into non-mixed numbers. The way I do that is I take the integer, the 4, I multiply by the denominator 5 to get 20, and I add the numerator. So that gives me 22 fifths. I already have that one. It's 25 40 fourths. And then that last one, 1 times 20 plus 1 is 21 twentieths. And actually what I could do here is I could start to cancel. So I know that 5 will go into 5 one time, into 25 five times. 22 goes into here once, into here twice. Um, I think that might be it. So I'm going to do 5 times 21. Well, 5 times 20 is 100. Times the 1 will be 105 over 2 times 20, 40. So I have 105 over 40. I don't see it anywhere here. But I could actually just go and answer this one because I know 40 is going to go into 105 two times. Um, and that's going to give me 80. 80 to 105 is 25, so I'm left with 25 40 -ths. That's the only one with a 2 in it. So I could stop there or I could just double check it. 5 goes into 25 five times, into 48 times. So when I reduce that fraction, I have 2 and 5 eighths, or answer B right here. Oh, this is, my, this is my printer screwing up right here. This is divide and simplify. So the way you divide fractions is you take that fraction as 9 tenths, and then you multiply it by the reciprocal. So you flip that thing over, 5 twelfths, uh, and then you multiply. And then you see if you could do any canceling. 5 will go into 5 one time, into 10 two times. These numbers are divisible by 3. 3 goes into 9 three times. 3 goes into 12 four times. Now that I've reduced, I multiply across the top to get 3, across the bottom, 8, and that gives me answer A, 3 eighths.
Okay, number 19. I think I'm going to end here at 21, about a third of it done. And I'll do the, I'll split the second part of this into two more videos. Edward's estate is to be split equally among his three heirs. His estate is worth two and three fifths of a million dollars. Oh, that's some money right there. So let me turn that into an, um, a non mixed number. Two times five, ten, plus three is thirteen fifths. How much will each ear get? So I want to take that total amount and I want to multiply it by one third. I mean, I could divide it by three. Remember, division is the same as multiplying um, by the reciprocal. So I'm going to take the total amount times one third. I look for any canceling. There's none to be done. 13 times one is 13. Five times three, 15. So each one of the heirs get 13 fifteenths million dollars. I guess if you got that much, you could have somebody do your math for you. Um, rank the fractions from least to greatest. So really to do this, you could probably estimate it. You know, this is two-thirds is like 66%, three-fourths is 75%, and five-sixths is going to be even more. So this is the smallest, the medium, and the largest. The other way to do it, you could figure it out with a common denominator. That common denominator would be 12. To get this one to be a 12, it would multiply by 2, so that would be 10 twelfths. The next one to get to 12, the 4 would have to be multiplied by 3, that would be 9 twelfths. And then to get this to a 12, you'd multiply by 4 to get 8 twelfths. So you could see the 2 thirds has to be first, then the 3 quarters, and then the 5 6 right here, answer D. All right, area of this triangle. Right here is base times height divided by 2. Um, actually, before I do this, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. This is Colfax Math, math with a purpose, hopefully helping you get through these standardized math tests. They're all pretty much the same. Um, kind of looking for the tips and tricks and reviewing really helps a lot. And, uh, and I'd love to hear your comments below if you're taking the trade skill math exam, if you're ready for it, how you did on it, if you've already taken it and where you're going with it. Okay, so I'm going to take that base of 40, but remember it's going to be base times height divided by 2. So I could actually even skip that and just do that 40 and cut that in half to get 20. And then I'm going to turn this into an improper fraction. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 1 is 17, over 2. So I have the base divided by 2 to start with, because multiplication is commutative. And then I turn that into 17 halves. Multiplying fractions, I look if I could cancel. 2 goes in here one time, in here 10 times. 10 times 17 is 170. I have feet times feet, or feet squared. So the answer is 170 square feet. Answer 21. All right, well, thank you for watching. Again, please comment below. Um, keep, keep practicing and keep working on these tests.